Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to be highlighting some fragrances that I think are seriously underrated and really deserve more talk, more hype. The first one is a stunning unisex fragrance from Henry Rose, and this is Queens and Monsters. If you are into a creamy sandalwood fragrance, you have to try this. It is one of the best fresh, spicy, sandalwood, vanilla scents that you can get. This would be a stunning signature scent for a man or woman. It can work easily year round for any occasion. You're just gonna smell so chic, polished, and pretty. It has a big dose of pedigree, but it's a very likable, smooth, earthy, green quality to the fragrance. It's not too much in my opinion. It has a violet leaf in there that's adding to the overall powdery, creamy experience. The vanilla is a non-gourmand, not sugary, sweet vanilla. It just rounds everything out and makes it so cozy and comforting. And then we have such an inviting, pretty coconut musk note, which I definitely get as a prominent note as well. It has quite good performance as well. Just a couple of sprays will last me about six hours. And I love the chic, simplistic, you know, timeless bottle. So if you're a signature scent kind of person and you like your creamy sandalwoods, I would highly recommend this. Another fantastic creamy sandalwood scent is Juliet Has a Gun Sunny Side Up. And although the scent itself is a quieter scent, it lasts. It has like a transparent, airy, but cocooning vibe to it. That isoe super is a note that some people have difficulty smelling, but it is a note that seriously aids in making your fragrance last. It really sticks to the skin. And this is a scent that is never going to be overwhelming. Like you can go to town with this and it's not going to offend anyone. It just smells lovely. It is the prettiest, like most comforting, feminine, powdery, creamy blend of sandalwood, vanilla, coconut, musk, like a transparent wood note. Oh my gosh, it is so pretty. This for spring, summer, and fall, it would struggle in the winter. It's just not the vibe. It's not the vibe for the winter. You're gonna want something stronger. It smells like a cloud or a pillow of these notes. People are just gonna think that you naturally smell so freaking good. And you're experiencing a very natural, subtle sweetness. So if you are not into your gourmands, you don't want a sugary kind of coconut or vanilla, this is not that. It's definitely an approachable, woody, musky take on those notes. And it just instantly puts me in a good mood. It smells happy and very chic. One of my favorite chocolate fragrances that I've smelled smelled is Maison Taite's Vicious Cacao. And I honestly think this is the best fragrance from the house. I've tried so many. Immediately when I smelled this on a test trip, I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna love that right there if it smells anything like that on my skin. It's called Vicious Cacao, but don't let the name scare you because this is not vicious at all, in my opinion. It is a very airy, approachable, just delightful, lightly sweetened chocolate fragrance. It's like a dusting cacao powder. We have an airy saffron and thinned out caramel, which adds a unique sweetness to the fragrance. It has some pink pepper, a little bit of rum. And because of that, because of the powdery chocolate, the rum, the pink pepper, it does have a little bit of a vibe, a little bit of a similarity to Guerlain's Gourmand Coquine. They don't smell too close, but I think that if you love Gourmand Coquine, you will also love Vicious Cacao. I low-key feel like they got a little bit of inspiration from that fragrance, but then spun it into their own thing. A translucent, warm amber and benzoin, a little bit of sandalwood. It is so pretty likable and yummy. I do recommend over spraying with this one, but let it hit your clothes and it's going to last. And the way this melds into your skin, it meshes beautifully. Like deep into that dry down, once it's really faded, it just adds 
a, a lightly sweet addictive tone to your skin. I have tried probably every single salty vanilla fragrance that you could recommend to me and my favorite, the only one that does not smell off, <laughs> unfortunately to me, is Lancome's Idol Aura. Like so many people talk about just Lancome Idol. The original, the intense, a couple of people about like the new nectar popcorn version. I don't hear anyone talking about this. This is so pretty. Oh my gosh. One of my most complimented scents. I tell you, this works magic on the skin. Like truly, this on skin is stunning. Unfortunately, for some reason, I would not recommend putting this on clothes because then it has like a little bit of a dusty vibe, but on skin, on skin, it just smells like you are a child of the sun. Just a happy-go-lucky, radiant human being, okay? So likable, so crowd-pleasing, guaranteed a compliment every time. And if you're not too into a salt note in your fragrances, this does not scream salt whatsoever, but it just adds like a little bit of an intrigue, a little bit of a unique spin to that vanilla. It's clean, musky, it has a powdery feel to the fragrance, and then really pretty, well-blended supporting floral notes and suits truly an enormous age range like it can be so young carefree but then also smell chic and delightful on a more mature person i love it this is a very transportive scent and by far my favorite from ellis brooklyn this is a prey this smells like you are staying in a log cabin drinking a little bit of booze just a little bit okay we're not going crazy here because we're going snowboarding or skiing, or sledding, your sport of choice. It's a winter vacation, and you are getting that fresh, green, woodsy smell from the juniper trees. We have a lot of cedar in here, some cardamom giving it a little fresh spiciness, and then what really pulls you in is this really quiet addition of saffron, praline, vanilla, nothing too sugary sweet, nothing edible. It does not scream gourmand whatsoever, but it's just a tiny little bit that's just like, oh, comforting and addictive. It adds that addictive factor to the fragrance. It's delightful. Highly recommend for men and women. Another unisex woody scent is Michael Malul's Bali. And this is a gorgeous pick for someone who enjoys a woody scent, but nothing too loud, nothing overwhelming. You want something fresh, maybe you're a little bit sensitive to fragrance. I think this is a great option. It has this translucent, transparent, balmy feel to the scent. It smells very natural and a super subtle sweetness from the Elemi resin. We have a smooth suede. This does not come off leathery whatsoever. It just smells very chic. A very creamy, likable sandalwood and musk. It smells clean. The Oris is, of course, supporting that overall creamy texture. It smells so pretty and fresh. It's a you but better woody scent. And I do recommend over spraying with this one. I am truly shocked, frankly, that this fragrance has not blown up on the internet, but I think I know why. It's a Harrods exclusive, so it's not quite as accessible as I would hope, but you know. The scent is 10 out of 10, honestly. It is one of the best rose saffron fragrances I've ever smelled in my life, and I do not like rose typically. I'm so picky about the note of rose, but this is stunning. It smells magical. Do you already know what I'm talking about? Ex Nihilo's Brompton Immortals. I have tried a lot of fragrances from Ex Nihilo and this is by far, like by far, not even close. This is by far my favorite. Impeccable. I've said this before, but it's like the best comparison I can make. And does it give you a clear idea of what it smells like? Maybe not but it's the picture that comes to my mind nonetheless. This smells like the Enchanted Rose from Beauty and the Beast, like that whole glowing, stunning rose. In its glass dome presentation, it's enchanted, it's magical. That's this, that is Brompton Immortals. This is a femme fatale fragrance. I am not kidding when I say this is literally the first fragrance that comes to mind when I think of that category. I'm gonna have to film that, I'm gonna have to film that video on sexy femme fatale fragrances. 
sneak peek, this is gonna be part of it. This has a small part of the fragrance that's giving you like a Baccarat Rouge 540 vibe, small, okay? The saffron doesn't pull in the same way, in my opinion, but it's giving you that feeling, that vibe of like, wow, this is a special fragrance, like where you can't get it out of your head. It's also one of the most exotic, like special occasion fragrances that I've ever smelled. Wow, okay, it has an ambery presence, it's deep from the patchouli, the alibinum, added attitude, spice, okay, from the pink pepper, a little bit of a creamy quality from the ylang, -ylang and then the vanilla. Mmm, the vanilla in here is special. That is definitely a prominent note. It smells expensive, it doesn't smell edible. It adds a definite sweetness to the fragrance, but this does not smell gourmand. Either the Enchanted Rose from Beauty and the Beast or like Princess Jasmine or something like that, okay? If you wanna smell like the holidays, very merry and bright. Truly, I feel like there is no other fragrance that screams the holidays more than Frisai's Tiesen Du. Amazing holiday festive fragrance. And don't be wearing this only exclusively for those holiday events. You can be wearing this all fall and winter. It smells incredible. It smells like you are visiting your rich aunt who has a second home in another state during the holidays. She has a lot of like very bougie wood and leather furniture. She's giving all the adults some fancy rum. We have some good music playing and she is baking like some sort of a sweet nutmeg bread or like gingerbread cookies, something of the sort in the kitchen. There are a lot of juniper trees in the area. This is her vacation home, okay? A little hint of a bitter orange note. This is by far my favorite from Frisai. It smells cozy and like you're staying in, but also it smells very refined, which is why I say you're rich aunt's second home. And she is serving the nice food. She is getting you the good stuff. Another very festive holiday-esque fragrance is Maisa Tobacco Elixir. If you are a fan of Tom Ford Tobacco Vini, and even if you are not, because I'm not the hugest, biggest fan of Tobacco Vini, but this is definitely in that scent family that this is Tobacco Vini perfected in my, in my opinion. And ever since I've gotten this, Eric cannot put it down, okay? And he smells sexy, he smells inviting, he smells cozy, like I wanna bury myself in his chest as per usual, but you know, it just <laughs> adds to the effect. This is a beautiful, warm, spicy fragrance. It has tobacco, vanilla, candy ginger, cinnamon, cloves. It's balmy, it's woody, we're getting amber. It has really good performance, actually. You only need a couple sprays and it's gonna be lasting all day. It smells like we're going luxury shopping around the holidays. We have a light snowfall. Music is playing, the streets are lit, and then in between shopping, of course, we gotta stop, go inside a nice bakery, pick up some holiday treats, some cookies, some sweet breads. It feels like there's a little bit of a boozy factor to this as well. It's good. I have tried at this point like 80% of the Maisa fragrances and so far this one is my favorite. And the last one I have to recommend is my personal favorite from the brand, Carolina Herrera Amethyst Haze. If you are into your lavender vanilla fragrances, this is my favorite. I used to actually not be a fan of lavender as a note. I am particular about it, but I really do appreciate it now. And this fragrance definitely grew my appreciation for the note of lavender. You are gonna have to like it because that is first and foremost the main ingredient of this fragrance. You are going to get that blast of an aromatic scent, but it is paired so beautifully, so smoothly with a little bit of a coffee note. It's not gourmand, it's not screaming coffee, it's just adding to the cozy factor. A non-edible vanilla to smooth everything out. Cashmere wood and then definitely pink pepper and cardamom giving it a spicy feel. It smells extremely cozy and comforting, but also so refined at the same time. Like you are bringing out the Barefoot Dreams blanket while watching a movie together with your loved ones. We have some 
nice overpriced candles lit. You brought the cutest mugs out and you're drinking a lavender vanilla coffee. And that element is quiet, so don't be expecting too much of that kind of vibe. Like uh, Maison Margiela's replica coffee break, you are going to be getting more of a gourmand experience in comparison with this one. So yeah, it's cozy but refined. It can easily transition from going out to staying in. I love this on its own, but I also love to layer it with a vanilla dominant perfume to amplify that quality. So that wraps up my recommendations for you for some seriously underrated perfumes that I think really deserve a lot more love. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already, if you wanna see me in any more videos. I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.